Ring the dinner bell for Trout, Kokanee, and Landlock Kings with Kel Kellogg's Willow Leaf Dodgers. Available in mini and magnum sizes at fishhuntshoot.com. Get yours today. Howdy guys, Kel Kellogg here. A while back, I did a video about how you might attach weight to one of your trolling rigs using basically a modified Carolina rig. I, I showed how to take a, an egg sinker or a bullet weight put it on a little piece of line with uh, snap swivels at either end, and you could insert that between your main line and your leader, and uh, you could tie up a few of those in various weights, and that way you could add a little bit of weight to your line to get a lure you know, just down below the surface, something that might not want to go down, like a troll and fly, something like that. Um, there are a lot of guys out there that prefer to get down in the water column using lead weights, and they get down you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 feet using nothing but lead weights. Now, I don't use these methods a lot myself, but I know how to do it. I prefer to use divers, lead core line, my downrigger, stuff like that. But I thought today we'd go over some methods for using fairly heavy weights to get down weights that you attach directly to your line. So first one I'm gonna show you, I showed you this recently. This is one of my trolling rudders and it has a weight hanger on it. You just add a weight right here, there's a hole in the rudder you just snap whatever size weight you want on the bottom of that rudder and drop it down you could use that's like a half ounce through there you could go all the way up to three or four ounces if you wanted to one of the shortcomings of this rig if you're using heavier weight is that the fish can fight directly against the weight so when you're fighting a fish you need to be sure to stay on that reel keep the line tight and keep the fish coming towards you if this stops in the water column and that fish is able to head shake against this he might throw the hook. So that's a shortcoming, but uh, you could certainly get down very deep with one of these trolling rudders with a weight hanging off the bottom of it. Now here's a couple other methods. I'm, I'm saving my, my favorite method for last, but this, this setup right here, you might have saw a guy on YouTube using this. His name is Rob Cooper. He lives in the Sacramento area. He likes to troll for kings out at Folsom Lake a lot. He pulls speedy shiners. I don't know all the rigs he uses, but I've seen him using this rig before, using a lead weight to get down. And here's how he's, he's rigged up. What he does, he takes his, his main line right here. He ties it into a three-way swivel. On the other side of that three-way, he attaches his leader, so the lure would be down there. And uh, on this dropper right here, he attaches a weight, okay? So this is better for getting down, for adding weight to, the, as compared to like my, um, my rudder, because this little dropper, this keeps the fish theoretically from fighting directly against the sinker because the sinker is hanging below the line. So when the fish is fighting, he's fighting against the tip of the rod, not so much the sinker, which is kind of free to swing around down there. Now, when you troll this through the water, the sinker blows back a little bit, but that leader floats up a little bit. Um, when you're letting a rig like this down, you don't just want to free spool it out there. That's not going to work very well. You need to kind of strip it off so it doesn't kind of all fall on itself and get tangled. But uh, this works very well. You'll see Rob out there. He's trolling pretty fast with those speedy shiners. It works very well for him. Um, it helps. I've got this, you know, rigged up on kind of a standard bait casting setup here. Um, if you're gonna do this, you know, seriously, it helps to have a line counter out and you're gonna have to go out and work out, you know, how much line with how much weight, you know, with how much uh, speed you're trolling with you know, indicates how deep you are. And those formulas, you might be able to find those online. I haven't looked for them. But the way I would do this is I would, you know, work at various speeds and I would find myself a nice sloping point where I could monitor the depth and then figure out what the combinations were and see when that sinker hits the bottom. And that way I might say, you know, I might say if I had a hundred feet of line out and I was going two miles an hour with a one ounce sinker, I know I'm X feet deep. And that's some trial and error, but uh, I think at that point, you're gonna have a very good idea of where your lines are and you're gonna be able to make adjustments really easily. Um, so let me show you my, my favorite setup. My favorite setup looks like this. I'll just show you it here from the end of the rod. We've got here, we've got the main line coming down and we've got it going through a slido. Now you guys that 
fish the California Delta, you're gonna know what that is. But these are called slidos, and it's what we use when we're delta fishing for stripers and sturgeon to set up a sliding sinker rig. There's a big snap on these where you're supposed to attach your weight, and uh, I just put the line, I put the line through the slido, I put on a bead, and then I put on a standard um, bead chain trolling swivel. The modification I make to this though is on that big snap, rather than attaching the weight directly to that snap, I put a second snap swivel. I do that in case I get oscillation on the weight. That allows the weight to spin and turn without torquing on the line up here. So I think that's important. As you can see, that, that spins very freely. The main benefit to a setup like this, you know, beyond the fact that you could change weights really quickly, is the fact that you're fighting the fish through the sinker. The fish can't really fight against the sinker. When he pulls away from that sinker, he's pulling directly to the rod tip once again. Similar to the three-way, a little bit cleaner setup and perhaps a little bit easier to change weights and certainly easier when you're letting it down. You don't have to be as worried about letting it down in the water calm slowly with this because the weight isn't really on a dropper. It's attached to this. It's gonna play out nice and clean, you know, there you go. A um, couple final thoughts. Let's talk about leader length and let's talk about sinker style. Um, leader length, it's kind of up to you. You know, I hear guys that use these type of rigs saying you need an eight foot leader or a six foot leader. I don't know how critical that is. If I were gonna do this, if I were in my kayak doing this, I would stick with something 48 inches or less just because if you get longer than that, it can be cumbersome netting a fish near the boat with a longer leader than that if you're in a small craft like a kayak. I think if I were in a power boat, I would probably go with a 72 inch, six foot leader, something like that. And you can run anything off the end of the leader. You can run a, a dodger on a spoon, a spoon, a fly, or a ball, whatever you wanna run, you can run back there just like any other trolling rig out there. Um, so that's, that's kind of my thought on leader length. I'd go with an eight or 10 pound test leader and uh, you know, set my drag accordingly and let her rip. Final thought, let me grab this other rig. I haven't done a lot of this kind of trolling, but I've done a lot of drifting. I've done a lot of saltwater fishing. And if I had to choose between a round sinker like that or a bullet like that, I would choose the bullet. Um, on most charter boats these days outside the Golden Gate, we use the bullets exclusively and the reason is that you get a lot less drag going through the water column or dragging along the bottom, whatever it is, you get a lot less drag with that more aerodynamic shaped sinker. That's kind of a no brainer. And I think this is just gonna perform a lot better for you when you're out trolling in terms of the amount of you know load up you're seeing on the tip of your rod as you troll, especially if you get into heavier weights. You know, if you're running the, the two, three, four ounce type weights, you're definitely gonna see less drag with that torpedo weight. So there's a couple methods for you, actually three methods for you to add weight to your trolling rigs. You're gonna have to get out on the water, do some experimentation. Hopefully you have a line counter reel so you can kind of calculate how deep you are. But to, once you figure out, you know, the fish are 75 feet back at two miles an hour with a two ounce sinker, you've got them dialed in. You just keep putting that recipe back out there and you should continue catching fish. I'm Kel Kellogg. I'm signing off for now. If you're looking for gear, you know where to go. Fishhuntshoot.com. Check out my store. And if you haven't subscribed, please take a second to hit that subscribe button. I'll catch you next time right here on YouTube. You have a wonderful day and stay healthy. Stay healthy.